You think you know Power World? You've tamed adorable creatures, built sprawling cities, and even captured a few legendaries. But there's a dark side to this Pokemon-inspired world that the game doesn't tell you about. There's more to Power World than meets the eye, ranging from the moral conundrums that arise from becoming friends with monsters to the harsh realities of surviving that are there. We're going to look into the 10 scariest secrets that Power World gives away in this video, so fasten your seatbelts, trainers, for you are about to see a facet of Power World that you were completely unaware existed. Power World is a survival crafting game that will be quite recognizable to fans of the genre who are gamers of Steam. However, the feature that sets this game apart from others is that the building of your base and your exploration of the world are all connected to PAL animals that you can catch, gather, and put to work. While it is undeniably a spoof of the monster-catching role-playing game genre, it is also a good survival crafting game in its own right, and with a hook which is as follows, really lovely. There are two options available to you. Either you can become a nasty slave driver, or you can take care of your friends, and they will take care of you. You should choose your base location wisely. In Power World, the survival crafting game, you have to collect resources to build your base and then collect even more resources to make your base even better. Your pals will be able to help you a little at first, but eventually they'll be able to do some of the work for you. The game doesn't tell you exactly where to build your first base, so make sure you choose a place near a lot of ore and stone sources so that you don't have to go far to get to them. When you find a place that is full of rock, coal, stone, sulfur, or another heavy object, it makes sense to build a second base there. Over time, you will be able to add more bases, Another main thing to know is the right pal for the job. It is possible to verify the amount of jobs that each friend is capable of doing on their own while they are at your base. These duties are included in the description of each friend. In order to dig for wood at your logging camp, fuel a furnace, or leave the appropriate stuff at your ranch, you will need particular friends. Make certain that the friends you have at your base are able to make use of the amenities that you have constructed. Path assistance is another important thing to remember friends are a little bit on the dim side. Due to the fact that they have been disoriented on the landscape and are unable to locate their way back to the feed box, they often have to go without food. Sometimes the slopes are just too steep, and they are unable to find out how to travel up and down a hill with any degree of difficulty. In the event that this occurs, you have the ability to remove a friend from your base and then re-enter them in order to respawn them. You may construct walls, floors, and stairs that your friends can utilize to assist them explore your base permanently. This will prevent them from wandering off course and provide them with a permanent solution to the problem. Continue to keep a close check on them. You need a lot of storage. In Power World, you will need a significant amount of storage space. Taking goods back to your base and placing them in barrels and shelves is something you will often have to do since they will quickly weigh you down and render you completely immobile if you carry a sufficient amount of them. As a result of the apparently unlimited stacking of items, you will only ever need one item slot in a barrel to store, for example, 9,999 X stone. Although this is the case, you will discover a vast assortment of resources, goods, kinds of ammo, materials, and many more. The fact that all of your facilities on your base have quick access to the storage on your base ensures that you will never be without anything, despite the fact that it will be quite simple to lose track of things. It will be much simpler for your friends to store the resources that they have generated if you position storage boxes in close proximity to generators such as logging camps and stone pits. You can catch bosses and people. PAL spheres, for some inexplicable reason, are compatible with almost anything. Is it a boss monster? When its health drops to a certain point, a PAL sphere has the potential to ensure that it remains your buddy for good. Are you going to be shot by a human opponent with a gun? However, despite the fact that the game cautions you that it is cruel, you are free to hurl a PAL sphere at them and include them in your party. In addition, you have the ability to capture a merchant and bring them to your base. You will need more ore. Ore is a material that is required for the creation of ingots, and ingots are necessary for quite a few of the things that can be obtained in the game. That would be good. However, mining ore is the sole step that takes a lot of time and there is no way to automate the process of earning ore unless you build your base on an ore spawn. In addition to this, it is heady, which makes it difficult to grow in big amounts. If you make care to position your base in close proximity to an ore spawn, you shouldn't have too much trouble with this. However, if you didn't take this into consideration, you will have to go ore mining very often. Pals level up when at your base or in your party. In spite of the fact that you never really utilize your companions in the field to engage in combat with other creatures or capture them, 
they will still level up. While you are exploring and fighting in Palpagos, your friends at the base will earn experience as you complete chores. Additionally, your friends and your party will earn experience practically continuously as you go through the game. Therefore, even if you manage to capture a friend who seems to be weak but is fascinating, you can just set it at your base or toss it in a party slot that is not being used, and it will quickly become just as powerful as the rest of your team. You should know more about Craft Pal Gear. There is a one-of-a-kind piece of gear available for practically every friend via the Pal Gear workbench, which is where the Pal Gear is located. By the time you have acquired a piece of friend gear, it will immediately apply to that particular sort of friend while they are in your party. Using Fox Sparks as a flamethrower, riding Rushor, and having Daydream follow along with you at all times are all possible thanks to this. This is true even while another friend is out on the pitch. You should catch more pals, so it seems like you have a nice friend. Doesn't that sum everything up? It's not true. Get a better look at them. Also, there's more. Maintain your friendships. Beyond that, there is a high possibility of receiving a friend with a unique passive skill that makes it a stronger partner or worker. You will get experience benefits for catching up to 10 friends of the same sort, and in addition to that, you will receive some experience bonuses. The Meat Cleaver will provide you with an intriguing method to get rid of your friends in the event that you find yourself with more friends than you currently need. Switch your pals in boss battles. There will be occasions when your friend needs a break. It is far more helpful to keep a check on the health of your friends rather than allowing them to battle to the death. If you see that they are growing weaker, you should immediately replace them with another friend who is similarly powerful and allow them to recover in their own domain. Healing does not take as much time as you may expect, and if you have a team that is well balanced, you could find that a friend can run out two or three times to completely assist you in defeating a monster. If you have a favorite kind that you like using, this is very beneficial for you. This is because you will often have at least one that is of a very high level, and if they die, you will discover that it is a great deal more difficult to do enough damage to beat the boss. You should create outposts. Put forth less effort and more work. You can locate a lot of places in the broader world that contain sulfur or other resources that are not very abundant at your base. These places may be found in the greater world. It is recommended that you establish second bases, sometimes known as outposts, in these areas and appoint specialized pals to do all of the laborious tasks on your behalf. If you do this, you will be able to concentrate on expanding and fortifying your primary base, and you will be able to return to collect these more precious resources whenever you need them. Establishing new bases is a rather inexpensive endeavor after you have gained the option to do so, and by that time, you will also be required to collect more important resources. Remember to hit that like button if you found these tips helpful, and subscribe for more in-depth explorations of your favorite games. If there's anything we missed, or if you have your own secrets to share, drop them in the comments below.